While some stop-motion methods remain the same, others have changed drastically with the advance of technology. Animator Phil Tippett, one of today's primary innovators, has a lifelong fascination with this art form. My main inspiration came in 1950, what was it, three or four, I think, or five, when King Kong came on television. And in 58, we, I saw Harry House and Seven Forty Sinbad. Yeah, I just fell in love with the, the, the surreality of the, of the objects moving themselves. I had no idea what, what generated them, but it was just you know, kind of a passionate fixation. For The Empire Strikes Back, Tippett designed and animated the fleet-footed snow beasts called Tauntauns, which hold an important place in stop-motion history. Because the Tauntauns had to move quickly, the effects team wanted to replicate the motion blur seen in live-action photography of fast-moving objects. For example, in looking at footage of a dog running, the dog will appear blurred in each individual frame. With traditional stop-motion animation, the moving object maintains clearly defined edges in each frame of film. The absence of motion blur results in the slight strobing effect characteristic of stop motion. For the Tauntaun shots, the puppet was moved slightly along a motion control track with each opening of the camera shutter. This first use of motion blur with stop motion animation involved only the forward momentum of the puppet's body. In Tippett's next film, Dragon Slayer, a complex motion control system was built to add motion blur to all the puppet's movements. The process was so successful, it gave rise to a new term, go motion. More recently, as dinosaur supervisor on Jurassic Park, Tippett transmitted his stop motion skills into the computer by use of a digital input device, providing animation for many key scenes, which were then rendered as computer-generated imagery. Ultimately, no matter what tool you're using, whether it's stop motion, go motion, computer graphics, uh, you're learning how to work with the limitations of the tools that you have. You have a, a mental image in your mind of what the thing should be moving like, and you're, you're constantly moving. No, it shouldn't be like that. It should be like this. And just trying to you know, keep all this stuff moving towards what you, you know, see in your mind's eye. You have a little movie in your head that you're running you know, back and forth, and uh, you know, it's, it's your imagination. You, know, you usually, I think, being you know, fired up and enthused by something that you've, you would like to see that you've never seen before you know, coming to life is, is a tremendous inspiration. As they continue to create movie magic one step at a time, stop-motion animators like Phil Tippett and the Kyoto Brothers are carrying on the legacy of the craft's pioneers.